I hope you're doing well today. It is May 16th. We are going to be looking at Psalm 145, not Psalm 101. Let me get over there. Pardon me for that. But we're going to be looking in the 145th Psalm today. Uh, see the see the description for other chapters for other chapters in Psalms for today's reading. But verse one, I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. I was thinking about the idea of, of sharing, of declaring. It's one of the things here, this, this declaration there in verse 4. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. But we'll start with verse 5. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty. That before we, before we share God's glory with others, first we have to receive with meekness the implanted word ourselves. First we, we meditate upon God's word. And as we meditate on God's word, we, we appreciate it. We appreciate it more and more. We know what some of the scriptures about the truth say, you know, buy the truth and sell it not. And that's, that's what we're talking about, that it begins with, with this meditation, with hearing, hearing and seeing what God has done and, and meditating upon it. And really, as we think about faith, the faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, making it our own. You know, as the Lord writes His law on our hearts and on our minds, and we meditate upon it. And it's, it's a wonderful thing, and we appreciate it more and more. But then we share it. And verse 4 mentioned one of the ways we share it, that we share it, one generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. And so we share it with the next generation. We share it with our children so that they can, so that they, the faith can be in them as well. Paul thinking of Timothy and talking about the, the genuineness of the faith that was in his grandmother and in his mother, and Paul was assured was in him as well. There has to be a concern for the next generation. And you see that all through the Old Testament. Teach these things to your children. Right, when you wake up, teach them. Teach them to your sons and to your daughters so that they can grow up and can be the men and the women that God wants them to be. God is looking for godly offspring. That's what he wants. He doesn't, he doesn't want... <laughs> he doesn't want... I heard a preacher one time. He doesn't want little worldlings. He wants godly offspring. And so teach these things. We declare God's works to the next generation. But also, back to our passage, verse 6, Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Verse 10, All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. Come down a little bit further. Verse 14. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due season. That business there in verse 14. The Lord upholds all who fall. We share the good news with the fallen. Because the Lord, the Lord raises up those who fall. He upholds all who fall. God makes the weak stand, and in weakness there is strength. He raises up all who are bowed down, that we recognize like we often do. God gives grace. God is graceful to the humble. 
He resists the proud. He lifts up the humble. And so we share with with those who are who are struggling. And we share with the next generation. We share with the fallen. We we meditate on it. And then as the chapter comes to a close, we have this idea. Let's start reading in verse 18. Verse 17, the Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. Speaking the praise of the Lord. In my notes I put encouraging and warning people. That we encourage people. Those who are those who are struggling. We encourage them. We meditate upon it ourselves. We share it with the next generation. And we rejoice at the fellowship we have with, as we think about, the Lord is near to all who call upon him. But not everybody calls on him, so we we encourage each other. And this is, and you might have noticed the verse earlier where it talks about the saints that it refers to. And let me move it back up a little bit. This is what the saints do. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you there in verse 10. So we encourage and we warn. The Lord preserves all who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. And so that is a part that is a part of it. The Lord is the Lord is long suffering. He does not want to destroy. That is not his that is not his desire. But if people have no interest in the Lord, if people do not love the Lord, if people do not fear the Lord, if people do not cry out to the Lord so that he can heal them and save them, if people are not interested in calling upon him, then the Lord will not draw near. The Lord draws near to those who draw near to him. And so we warn. We, make sh- we, we teach the next generation. We uphold as the Lord upholds those who are struggling. We meditate on it ourselves, and we encourage and warn. I hope this brief look into this psalm has been helpful for you today. Appreciate you. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you join us for our next look into God's Word.